The Oculus Rift put virtual reality in the public eye, but it's got some serious competition in the form of the HTC Vive, which is built in partnership with Valve. This is virtual reality, as you've always dreamed of it. What instantly sets the Vive apart from the Rift and other VR headsets is the fact that it was designed from the ground up with a standing walking experience in mind. You're not forced to stay in your chair, but instead can get up and walk around within a limited space, which can be up to a 16 foot by 16 foot square. Walking in reality while interacting with virtual reality may seem like a lot of work, but it's incredibly immersive and resolves most of the motion sickness issues that VR can cause. There's no longer a disconnect between what you see and what your body feels, and when you build a device in fantastic contraption, you feel like you're really building it. When you duck and weave in hover junkers, the adrenaline rush is unlike anything else. A pair of handheld controllers allow interaction with games, and they're not quite like anything that we've seen before. They include sensors that track motion, like say, a Wiimote, but they're also tracked by external sensors as well, and they communicate wirelessly. We didn't detect any latency while using them. They're a key part of the experience and give the Vive a definite edge over the Rift, which won't debut a similar controller until the second half of this year. The Vive's freedom of movement does have some downsides. The headset isn't wireless, so tripping over the cord is a minor but constant concern, and the Vive requires installation of two lighthouse motion trackers, which must be about six feet off the ground and positioned at opposite ends of the room. Now that makes initial setup a bit more demanding, but it's not as bad as it sounds thanks to Valve's informative and somewhat amusing user documentation. Using the Vive for long periods of time is pretty comfortable. The headset can feel a bit heavy, but when properly adjusted, the weight is well distributed and the built-in padding spreads the load. Now that same padding can get sweaty if the Vive is used in a warm room, and that frankly can be a bit gross. We also noticed the field of view is limited. At times, it is possible to notice that you're looking at a screen through a pair of lenses, which breaks the sense of immersion a bit. Now the Vive is $800 and requires a compatible computer that'll likely set you back at least $1,000 if you don't already own one. Now that's a lot of money, but the Vive is easily the most immersive VR headset. And it also feels surprisingly mature. This is not a beta kit or a half-hearted effort. It works well right out of the box without hours of fiddling. This is the VR experience we were promised several years ago, and that more than justifies the high price.